points more. Five points, it's better than six. We're now, we're now about at 20 minutes, getting under the clock here. Uh, but uh, five games is still a mathematical fighting chance. And we have a London system from Magnus. I mean, it had to happen at some point in the match. We know that Hans actually did a course in the Jabawa London. And here, Magnus, he essays it. It's a very solid opening. Not always the most ambitious, but Magnus doesn't need it to be ambitious anymore. He just needs to milk this match clock. I think these positions are also a little more dangerous than they first look, right? Not the most ambitious, but he does still have the bishop. Still poking at the king side, right? Looking for some tactics. It's true. I won't deny it. And I met a gentleman from Minnesota earlier who is a fan of Andrew Tang. Andrew Tang loves these positions from the white side, the Penguin GM. But in this position at the moment, well, black does have the healthier pawn structure, right? We have a pawn chain here. That's double pawns from white's perspective. So the evaluation objectively is level, but I think some of the elements here do favor uh, black until that move F6. I mean, that move just was a problem. Yeah, F6 allowed F5. Literally, it happened on the board, and if you play E5, the knight pops into E6, which not just hits the rook exactly, it hits the D5 pawn and the rook on F8. And by the way, you can't play rook D8 because the knight would take it. So suddenly black's position on tilt just with one pawn move Suddenly, Ben Feingold looks right. There was a queen takes d5 tactic that wasn't played, but it doesn't matter because this isolated queen pawn, the IQP, my mom asked me during the break, she said, what's the IQP? It's the isolated queen pawn, but there is a queen pawn no more. It's been captured, and now that knight is protected here. This is just a clear advantage for white. Clear advantage, a clear pawn, and also one that he can get a lot of time off the clock. Again, these, these games have been exactly what you would want if you're trying to protect a lead and bullet, right? Regardless of the result that we just had where Hans Neiman won, this is, this is what Magnus wanted heading into Bullet. Ooh, 97, and now 97. 97 wins the exchange immediately. I said it before you highlighted it. I said it first. Jinx, what do 10? You owe me a Coke. Well, the most important thing is that Magnus already has a Coke Cola next to him, and he gets the win with that fork. He is giving up his knight to win a rook. That's an exchange in his favor, and that's another win for Magnus Carlsen. The lead is back to six points. And you hear the fans letting him, letting him have it in all the right ways. They are here to see Magnus Carlsen do what he does best. And uh, many, many Magnus fans in the house cheering him on as he extends his lead here. 13 half, 7 half. It's been a fight, but now with 17 minutes remaining, I think for Hans, he has to win every single game. Yeah, we're, we're almost in that mathematical territory where it's, uh, it's win or go home in this match. Uh, again, blunders can happen. Sometimes games are short. But when you get this big of a lead, all you have to do is compete against that clock ticking down above Hans' head. That's what makes the format great, but sometimes in matches like this, where one side has frankly been dominant and has a large lead, you kind of have to talk about the math, whether you like it or not, and, and call it what it is, which right now, it is almost the end of the road for Hans. It is looking to be the case, and once again, Magnus, he trades on d4, giving himself an isolated queen pawn, so we keep talking about that today, and wow, the fancy trades here, the queen on f6 looks menacing, if a knight can get to h6, Danny, that's a good old-fashioned checkmate, but watch out for the back rank as well, oh wow, he blocks the knight, but he is really playing with fire. Both sides looking for potential mates, I'm looking at e5 and swing that rook over to the h-file, but Magnus attacks the rook first. Okay, Hans is all in on the attack. I love it whether it works or not. Let's go. Knight takes h7, does that work? Knight takes h7 at least wins a pawn, it would seem. No, he does. that was fun. <laughs> that was fun, but that's not fun for Hans Neiman. If you're trading queens in this position, your rook's under attack, e4 is loose. The a5, bishop a6 at any moment could be devastating, and it's fine. I think right now it's devastating. Good call out. Here comes bishop a6. Oh, bishop a6 anyway is just threatening mate. That is a problem. Hans kind of... Puts hand to head and uh, recognizes that that it's over there. I know we have a number of Hans fans in the house, but I think we have a ton of Magnus fans. It seems like uh, there are a lot of fans of what people consider the greatest of all time. I mean, he's probably got more fans around the world than, than any chess player. I don't know if it's fair to say that ever lived. I mean, in the modern era, right? I mean, global population stats rise. Vichy has many fans. Okay, Vichy, okay, Vichy <laughs> actually might rival him there. And uh, India, India's population there, I mean, but I think a lot of people in India are also big fans of Magnus, right? That's true. And the truth is that obviously he's dominant, his, his, uh, his reputation precedes him, right? This is what he does. And Magnus Carlsen showed up today and did what he was asked to do.
And he's doing it once more. Hans has more time than he started with. He needs to play at this blistering pace, but we see in the position that the pawn structure is healthier for Magnus Carlsen. He doesn't have any double pawns. Black on the other end, double isolated pawns. That bishop on c8 stuck at home. The a pawn is trying to keep it at bay. And yeah, Hans is going to try to get his pieces out, but Danny, it just looks like it's much more fun to have this from the white side. I agree. I love that move, rook a3. That is full board awareness. That rook is doing work on both sides of the board. If it swings over, Things could get dirty over there. He's going to take with the Rook? I he think gonna, he oh, is. he does it. Okay, yeah. He might go for a win here and just really, really put on a show for the fans. I think Knight H5, the Bishop is trapped on G7. So that Rook, it lifted. It was swift. And the end of this game is also swift. Wow. Resignation, another win for Magnus. Wow. Magnus Carlsen with an eight-game lead. Putting on the... Putting on the Ritz, was that a thing at one point? I feel like that was a thing. Put, no, that was, you try to make everything. Uh, Stop was, trying to make fetch that happen. Was a, that was a thing. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. He's putting on a show. He's uh, dancing his way to a victory right now, and I think mathematically it is what it is to say a phrase that means absolutely nothing or means everything in a weird existential way. It is literally what it is. Oh, that was extremely profound. I don't even know where that came from. Where that happened. <laughs> it had to. It's late here in Paris, and it's late in this match, and you see that Magnus Carlsen, he has an eight-point lead. That's the first time we're saying that, and it looks like for Hans, I mean, he's just throwing in the towel. He needs to play instantly. He needs Magnus to lose every game just right out of the gate, and well, this is actually going to be perhaps a loss for Hans right out of the gate because the evaluation board is minus three already for Black. Yeah, and D3 is on the agenda. D3 looks, okay. I think D3 was the best move. Um, but Magnus plays queen of six. He wants bishop D6, yeah. A little more, little more easy chess here. Oh. oh. But now D3 comes. There's tactics everywhere. Bishop of four check is next, by the way. Hans Neiman goes down and out. We have a nine-game lead for Magnus Carlsen. He's uh, he's just kind of like, hey, let's get this over with. I don't even know what he was doing with this. He, next one, next one. He was okay. He was like, bring it on, yeah. bring it on. Let's go, let's roll. That's what Magnus wants. And uh, well, where do we go from here? Right? There was a lot of talk, a lot of drama heading into this match. In the end, the chess on the board was Magnus Carlson's day. I mean, Magnus Carlsen is the strongest player on the planet. I have no reservations. Nobody does in saying that. And that doesn't take away from the fact that Hans Niemann is also a very strong player. But when you're facing an inform, a potentially angry Magnus like this, and you're, he's playing the way he did today, it wasn't perfect. There were some clear mistakes. He blundered a pawn for nothing and still won that game. It just goes to show that when Magnus, you know, he is flexing those muscles, he's the best player on the planet, and really, who's going to stop him? No one can, right? And, uh, and not Hans Niemann. I mean, again, we said it on record, off record, whenever we were asked. And again, it's exactly what the media, this match had more attention from non-traditional chess media than anyone we've done in, a, in maybe ever. I mean, frankly, in a very long time. And when you get asked the question, like, who's the favorite? Who's going to win? You try to find new ways to say it, it for it to sound politically correct and not just like bias. But the obvious answer is that Magnus Carlsen is the favorite in every chess match that he plays. Yeah, it's not disrespectful to say that. I think with all the tension and all the media and the fireworks between these two, it seems like that. But objectively speaking, when you have the number one rated player playing someone that he outrates by about 100 points in classical chess, yep. and even more in blitz chess, at least in terms of over the board ratings, then it's clear that Magnus is the heavy favorite. That's not a disrespectful statement. And I think that between these two, of course, there is a ton of bad blood. I don't think it's ever going to go away. I think that uh, these two, you know, if they play many more matches, oh, we'll see much more of their talking. But I think for Magnus, he is letting his moves do the talking. He is playing a great match, and he's about to win another game as multiple rooks are under attack. Yep. And the I think that Hans, guarded, by the yeah, way. His Hans is getting cooked here. We've avoided just saying the chess spoke for itself many times.